Hello YouTube, this is Trun. I'm standing here on a customized copper farm, which follows Ian XO4's design, which is the easiest and most efficient copper farm that I know. However, Ian's initial design can become rather laggy, even though it's self-throttling on the multiplayer server, it will create a lot of lag for reasons that I'll explain later in the video. So I set up to build a farm where I could rather precisely limit the amount of lag it creates. The idea of reinforcement-based copper farms was developed by Gnemon, and I strongly recommend to check out this video, it's great, as all of his videos, by the way. Ian XO4 created a fascinating design, which basically can use all of the computing capacity of your computer. It will spawn thousands of mobs at a time. However, to make this farm server-friendly, you can just build it in the overworld, anywhere. It doesn't have to be a special biome. You want to build it high enough over the ground so that no reinforcements can spawn on the ground. So the only place where the reinforcements can spawn are these two arms of the farm that I've built. And I can light up one arm using redstone lamps. And this means if these lamps are lit, no reinforcements can spawn in this arm. If I flick the lever controlling the lamps, the only place where the reinforcements can spawn is this other arm. Let's check the farm in operation. The design of the farm is by Ian XO4. And if you haven't seen his video yet, please check it out. I have linked it in the description. Otherwise the farm won't make a lot of sense to you. The player stands on an AFK spot and hits an armor stand at a very precise interval of 45 game ticks. And on top of the player are drowned or zombies that call in reinforcement that can only spawn in very specific spaces. To start a farm, you have to get a few zombies in and then you just swing away. And with time, the farm will ramp up and you will get more and more reinforcements. The zombies will go into the water column in the middle and be converted to drowned. And then they are killed and they will drop copper. And this is a gorgeous sight. I could watch this all day, how the zombies come in. Below the killing zone, we have a minecart yeeting based collection. Now, most of the stuff we collect are rotten flesh and armor. They are burnt, but we have a few item sorters and one shulker box loader for the copper and also for the raw chicken and the feathers. Now, I absolutely love Ian XO4's farm, but his original design to build a farm in the end or in other regions where you have a large flat surface can be fairly laggy on a multiplayer server. Here you can see the areas where the reinforcements can spawn. Of course, if the spawning conditions are met, that means the light level is zero and there's no other mob in the vicinity. So this is all true here because we have used tinted glass. This farm will ramp up and we will see a huge amount of zombies spawning. It starts harmless enough with just a few zombies. It might take a while for you because local difficulty factors in. So you might have to spend a few hours in the chunk so that the local difficulty is high enough that you get reasonable number of reinforcements. But it gets more. The reinforcements are not limited by the mob cap. That's the idea of the farm. But over time, we get more and more reinforcements, basically until the server can't handle it anymore. Until we reach more than 50 MSPT, more than 50 milliseconds of processing. On a single player world, this is perfectly fine. Go for it. But on the server, the farm is self-throttling. That means if we reach 50 MSPT, then the farm will slow down a bit, reduce the number of spawns. But at some point you will reach the limit of the server. At this time the farm will start to throttle itself, but this takes a while, this takes a few minutes. And now consider that another player wants to do something that requires a bit of processing power. For example, he just flies and has to load in chunks. Then the game will suddenly lag rather severely because again, it takes a few minutes until this farm ramps down. So this farm will suck up every bit of available processing power from your server and it will severely hamper your other players unless they are just standing still or just building something. And this is where my design comes in. Here we are in the world download and I replaced a bit of prismarine using tinted glass so that we can see what's going on. In this design, the number of spawning spaces is rather severely limited. Apart from the self-throttling of the farm, which happens if zombies are killed and not converted to drown, the other limiting factor is the number of spawning spaces. And you can see whenever the player swings, the game will find spawning spots. The algorithm just has these two arms to work with because all of the other spawning spaces are not valid. A zombie can only spawn in if there is no other zombie blocking the hitbox. And that means at any time, a lot of the spawning spaces are blocked. The more zombies we have, the more spawning spaces are blocked. In this setting, the game will spawn maybe 20 to 30 zombies every two seconds. And let's check about the lag. You can see we are at 23 MSPT. The entities are 16 MSPT. So this is already well under the 50 MSPT that we have. 
And of course, we can limit the farm further by enabling these redstone lamps. The redstone lamps will light up this arm, so me that means the spawning conditions are not met, and the only space where zombies can spawn is this arm. Now let's run the farm a bit, and the processing time of the entities is reduced to 9 MSPT, so this farm is suddenly very lag friendly. Of course the rates suffer, the more zombies you spawn the more copper you get, but on the server you can run this farm basically forever and none of the other players will complain. Now if you just leave there will be quite a lot of drowned remaining in the farm, because they pick up items so they don't despawn. So whenever you get there for the next time you can just go in and start hitting, and you can see it on the minimap. On the top left, the yellow dots are the drowned that appear, so the farm does start up again. But you have to start up the farm somehow, especially if the local difficulty is low, it can happen that the farm dies down in the first few minutes of operation instead of ramping up. Therefore, I built a farm on top of a zombie spawner, which is less than 128 blocks below the farm. The zombies are moved towards a water elevator, However, I can block off this tunnel, so I can just go down, wait until a few zombies have spawned, remove the blockage, the zombies will be pushed into the water elevator, I can go up and can lure the zombies into the center of the farm, as demonstrated in Ian XO4's original video. Of course, once you come out of the water tunnel, the zombies will immediately attack you, so better have some decent armor and perhaps avoid thorns. Now if you play on a multiplayer server, depending on the speed of the server and the number of players, you could build any variant of this farm. You could, if you want to make it even more lag friendly, you could light up a bit of the right arm behind me. You need very little spawning spaces to keep this farm going. On the other hand, if you want to start the farm, you would turn off the lights, swing away until you have enough drowned in the middle and then you can turn off the one arm and keep the farm lag friendly. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like if you want to see more content like this and see you next time. Bye bye!